Welcome to a lesson on how to solve a linear homogeneous constant coefficient system of ODEs in the form of x prime equals p times x using the eigenvalue method when the matrix P is a two by two matrix that has complex eigenvalues. A matrix may very well have complex eigenvalues even if all the entries are real. Take for example the system represented by x prime equals the two by two matrix with entries one, one, negative one, one times x. Recall to solve the system, the first step is to determine the eigenvalues by setting up the determinant of p minus lambda i equals zero and solving for lambda. In this case, notice p minus lambda i results in the two by two matrix with entries one minus lambda, one, negative one, and one minus lambda. So now we have the determinant of this two by two matrix equals zero. Where the determinant is equal to one minus lambda times one minus lambda minus one times negative one, which results in the square of one minus lambda plus one equals zero. Multiplying this out, we end up getting lambda squared minus two lambda plus two equals zero, which is not factorable. Solving using the quadratic formula or completing the square, we get lambda equals one plus or minus i. Notice here we have two complex eigenvalues. Recall the next step is to determine corresponding eigenvectors by setting up the equation, the difference of p and lambda i times vector v equals a zero vector, and then we solve for a vector v to determine a corresponding eigenvector. If we have complex eigenvalues, the corresponding eigenvectors are also complex. Let's work on this on the next slide. Beginning with lambda sub one equals one minus i, notice the difference of p and lambda times i results in the two by two matrix with entries i one, negative one i, and then we have times vector v equals a zero vector. To determine a corresponding eigenvector, let's write out the corresponding equations. The first equation is i v one plus v two equals zero. The second equation is negative v one plus i v two equals zero. These two equations are multiples of one another. If we multiply the first equation by i, we get the second equation. This indicates we have an infinite number of solutions and we can determine a corresponding eigenvector using either equation. Using the first equation, we now know that i v one equals negative v two, or using the second equation, we have v one equals i v two. If we use the second equation and let v two equal one, notice v one is equal to i, giving us a corresponding eigenvector, the vector v one, which is the vector i one. And now we do the same for lambda sub two equals one plus i. The only difference in the setup is lambda is now one plus i, P minus lambda i results in the two by two matrix with entries negative i one, negative one, negative i, again times vector v equals a zero vector. Below we have the corresponding equations. The first equation indicates that v two equals i v one. The second equation indicates that v one equals negative i v two. Again, we can use either equation. Using the second equation, notice if v two equals one, then v one equals negative i giving us the corresponding eigenvector, the vector v2, which is the vector negative i1. Now at this point, we could write the general solution in the form of x of t equals c1 times x1 plus c2 times x2, like we did when we had two distinct real eigenvalues and corresponding eigenvectors. This would give us x equals c1 times the eigenvector i1 times e to the power of one minus i times t, plus c2 times the eigenvector negative i1 times e to the power of one plus i times t. Or we can multiply this out and express it in the form on the right. But we don't want to give the general solution in this form. We prefer to give the general solution without complex numbers. Before we continue, let's look at the notes on the right. A plus ib bar is equal to a minus ib. The bar above the a plus ib is called the complex conjugate. So for example, the complex conjugate of two plus three i is two minus three i. If a is a real number, the complex conjugate of a is equal to a, and that's because if we're given the number, let's say three, three minus zero i and three plus zero i is still three. Similarly, we bar whole vectors and matrices by taking the complex conjugate of every entry. For our example, notice lambda sub one is equal to one minus i, and lambda sub two is equal to the complex conjugate of lambda sub one, which is one plus i. Similarly, notice the eigenvector v one is the vector i one, and the eigenvector v two is equal to the complex conjugate of the vector v one, which is the vector negative i one. 
the complex conjugate of i is negative i, the complex conjugate of 1 is 1. So we didn't have to go through all this extra work to determine the vector v2. We could have just found the complex conjugate of the vector v1. But in fact, we only have to use lambda sub 1 and the eigenvector v sub 1 to determine a real value general solution. So going back to our work, we will let x1 equal the eigenvector i1 times e to the power of 1 minus i times t. And now we'll apply Euler's formula to eliminate the complex numbers. Let's do this on the next slide. To begin, e to the power of 1 minus i times t is equal to e to the t times e to the power of negative i t. And now we apply Euler's formula to e to the power of negative i t, which gives us cosine t minus i sine t. So now we know that e to the power of 1 minus i times t is equal to e to the t cosine t minus i e to the t sine t, which gives us x1 is equal to the eigenvector i1 times the difference of e to the t cosine t and i e to the t sine t. Next, we determine the product, which gives us x1 equals the two by one matrix with entries i e to the t cosine t plus e to the t sine t and e to the t cosine t minus i e to the t sine t. Next, we write this as a sum of two matrices where the first matrix will contain the real parts and the second matrix will contain the imaginary parts. So the first matrix has entries e to the t sine t and e to the t cosine t, and the second matrix has entries i e to the t cosine t and negative i e to the t sine t. If we want to, we can factor out e to the t from the first matrix and i e to the t from the second matrix. Either way, we now have the form x1 equals x3 plus x4 times i. And what's special about this form is that x3 and x4 are two linearly independent solutions. As a result, we can determine the general solution using just x3 and x4, which will give us real value solutions for the general solution. So looking at the notes at the bottom of the screen, our general solution will be x of t equals c1 times x3 of t plus c2 times x4 of t where x3 of t is equal to the real part of the eigenvector v1 times e to the power of lambda sub 1t, and x4 of t is equal to the imaginary part of the eigenvector v1 times e to the power of lambda sub 1t. And therefore, our general solution is x of t equals c1 times the vector sine t cosine t times e to the t plus c2 times the vector cosine t negative sine t times e to the t. We can also express the solution as shown here on the right. Using this method, for each pair of complex eigenvalues, a plus ib and a minus ib, we get two real-valued linearly independent solutions. We then go on to the next eigenvalue, which is either a real eigenvalue or another complex eigenvalue pair. If we have n distinct eigenvalues, real or complex, then we end up with n linearly independent solutions. If we had only two equations, meaning n equals two, as in this example, then once we found the two solutions, we are finished, and we have the general solution as expressed below. Also notice, there are some additional formulas below to help determine x3 and x4. Before we go, let's summarize our findings. If we have a first order linear, homogeneous, constant coefficient system of ODEs in the form of x prime equals p times x, and p is a two by two matrix with complex eigenvalues, step one, for each pair of complex eigenvalues, we can find the general solution using just lambda sub one and vector v sub one, where lambda sub one is an eigenvalue and the vector v sub one is a corresponding eigenvector. After we determine lambda sub one and vector v sub one, we write the vector equation, x one of t equals v one times e to the power of a plus ib times t. Next, we apply Euler's formula to remove the complex numbers Step four, we write the result in the form of x1 of t equals x3 of t plus i times x4 of t. And then from there, using x3 and x4, we write the general solution in the form of x of t equals c1 times x3 of t plus c2 times x4 of t. I hope you found this helpful.